Hello there, I'm Monica Reinagel, and you're listening to the Nutrition Diva Podcast, where we are celebrating 10 years of bringing you this podcast every week, which debuted way back in 2008. Thanks to our loyal listeners, it's been one of the most highly rated health and fitness podcasts ever since. And if you're a brand new listener this year, well, welcome to the party. I look forward to getting to know you. You can find a complete archive of all 460 Nutrition Diva podcasts, which also include complete transcripts and links to related resources on our website at nutritiondiva.quickanddirtytips.com. This week, we're talking about why antidepressant medications so frequently cause weight gain and what we might be able to do to fight back against this unfortunate side effect. Our show this week received support from Squarespace, the company that makes it easy to create a unique website to showcase your work or publish your content, even sell products and services of all kinds in just a few clicks. You can customize everything from the look and feel to settings and products using beautiful templates created by world-class designers, and there is nothing to install or patch or upgrade ever. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch your website, use the offer code DIVA and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And also, be sure to send me a link to your new website. I'd love to see what you've created. That's squarespace.com, and use the offer code DIVA to save 10%. And now, let's dig into today's topic, which is one that affects millions of people. Antidepressant medications can be hugely helpful, even life-saving, for those who suffer from certain types of mood disorders, but they can also sometimes cause people to gain a significant amount of weight, not so helpful. Studies indicate that about 25% of the people who take antidepressant medications report significant weight gain. Now, this seems to be more common in those who are taking the drugs for six months or longer. But it's not at all rare for people to report gaining 8 to 10 pounds within just a few weeks of starting drug therapy. Either way, it's a bummer. You can easily imagine that frustration and negative feelings about weight gain could cancel out whatever mood-elevating benefits those drugs might be delivering. There is some controversy over how much these drugs are really helping the millions of people who take them. My friend Dr. Ellen Hendrickson reviewed some of that research in a recent episode of her podcast, The Savvy Psychologist. According to Ellen, studies suggest that a lot of people actually get little to no benefit from taking antidepressants. The drugs seem to work best in those with severe depression or, at the other end of the spectrum, for those with mild but long-lasting or chronic depression. But she also emphasizes that these statistical analyses can't predict how any one individual will respond. In other words, your mileage may vary. It's really important to work with a qualified health professional that can help you get the best possible results with the fewest side effects and also help you assess whether those benefits outweigh those costs. For example, sometimes the problem of unwanted weight gain can be solved or at least improved by switching to a different antidepressant medication in the same class. Although some antidepressants are statistically more likely to lead to weight gain, the effects vary greatly from person to person. So you might gain weight on one of the drugs that's not supposed to cause weight gain or vice versa. And you know, the same seems to be true of the mood-elevating benefits. For reasons no one seems to fully understand or be able to predict, one drug may help a lot and another very similar drug may not help at all. So it's not at all uncommon for patients and their doctors to try a number of different options to find the one that works the best and or has the fewest unwanted effects. And as Dr. Hendrickson reminds us in her episode, The winning solution for depression and other mood disorders very often includes some sort of talk therapy in addition to pharmaceutical interventions. And to that, I'd like to add a plug for healthy diet, exercise, and good sleep habits as an essential part of mental hygiene and well-being. But let's say that the best possible solution for you includes a medication that has led to weight gain. Is there anything that you can do to fight back? 
I do have six ideas to share with you, but first, I also wanted to take a moment to thank our other sponsor, Third Love. When it comes to bra shopping, it's all about finding the right fit for you, and Third Love uses thousands of real women's measurements to create bras that fit better and feel great. They've got 60 different sizes available with cup sizes A through G, including half cups. And right now they're offering you 15% off your first order. So to find the bra that's perfect for you, just answer a few simple questions on the Third Love's Fit Finder quiz. It takes just a few seconds and you can do it all from the comfort of your home. These bras are so comfortable, you might forget you're wearing them. And if you don't agree, returns and exchanges are always easy and free. So this year, make the change that will change the way that you think about bras. Go to thirdlove.com slash diva and find your perfect fitting bra and then get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash diva. And now let's talk about what we can do to combat weight gain due to antidepressant medications. Now I have to start by saying that we are at a bit of a disadvantage here. Although this unfortunate side effect is very well known and well documented, we still don't fully understand why antidepressants cause people to gain weight. Theories include that antidepressants may affect your metabolism or your appetite or cause water retention or perhaps a combination of these effects. Some of those things may just be beyond our control, but let's not let what we can't do keep us from doing what we can. Antidepressants or not, here are some strategies that can help keep your metabolism revved and your appetite under control. Number one, pump up the protein. Increasing your protein intake is going to help on several different fronts by modestly increasing your metabolism, but also helping to keep hunger at bay. So you want to try to include some protein at every meal and snack. And if you need some ideas on how to do this, I've posted some links in the show notes for today to some previous episodes and articles on how to get more protein into your diet. And the transcript, of course, is on our website at nutritiondiva.quickanddirtytips.com. The second tip for you is to find the fiber. Increasing fiber can also help keep hunger pangs at bay. So seek out more beans, lentils, split peas, soybeans, whole grains, and come on, eat those apples and potatoes with the skins on. My third tip is to value the vegetable. Vegetables do contain some fiber, not to mention tons of nutrition and flavor, but one of their least appreciated attributes is that they are also very high in water. And that means that they take up a lot of room on your plate and in your stomach. Increasing your vegetable intake is one of the most effective and also enjoyable ways to cut back on calories, and that can help with weight gain. Vegetables can also help with water retention because they increase your potassium intake. And I also have some previous episodes and articles with more tips on how to eat less without feeling hungry. And I've also included links to those in our show notes for today. My fourth tip is to reduce refined carbs. I mean, with all those extra vegetables and legumes and protein foods you're adding to your diet, something's going to have to go. And at the top of my list for foods to eliminate are those that are made with refined flour and or added sugars. And so that's going to be sodas, sweetened beverages, sweets, white bread, pastries, and most baked goods. These foods add a lot of calories, not much nutrition, and they don't keep you full for very long. That's three strikes. They're out. The fewer of these foods you eat, the less you will crave them and the better you will feel and look. My fifth tip is to seek the sun. Exposure to natural sunlight can boost your mood by elevating your serotonin levels, and it can also help head off cravings for those starchy foods. We talked more about this in a whole series of episodes that Ellen Hendrickson, the savvy psychologist, and I did focusing on the effects of food on mood and vice versa. And again, I've got links to all three of those shows in our show notes for today if you'd like to check that out. Now, you can double your sunshine benefit by exercising while you're outside. Or for that matter, exercise inside. Just exercise. As my friend Brock Armstrong of the Get Fit Guy podcast is fond of pointing out, exercise may be one of the most potent antidepressants of all. 
He also likes to remind us that movement doesn't necessarily have to leave you out of breath and sweaty in order to be beneficial. Even a brief, brisk walk can instantly lift your mood and boost your energy. And finally, I want to encourage you to try to keep your perspective here. It may be helpful to remember that weight gain caused by antidepressants is not your fault. It's not the result of poor choices that you've made, and it doesn't reflect poorly on your character or your willpower. It's the result of a medical intervention. Although they are never welcome, sometimes we do have to accept some side effects as part of the cost of feeling better. If you find yourself in this situation, try not to get too down over things that you can't control and instead focus on what you can do given your current circumstances to feel and to be just a little bit healthier every day. You may not be exactly where you want to be right now, but you'll be moving in the right direction. And in the end, that's what really matters. This is Monica Reinagel. Thank you so much for listening today. If you have comments or questions on today's topic, or maybe a suggestion for a future show, you'll find me on the Nutrition Diva Facebook page, where I love to connect with listeners. And now, have a great week, and remember to eat something good for me.